Okay. All right, so on when we met last week on Wednesday, uh, I, I kind of talked a little bit about uh, view creation over here in the project browser, right? And I just want to remind you that we're taking a little break from uh, geometry creation and we're going to talk about, or we talked about annotation last week. We talked about dimensions and grids and text and leaders and all of that good stuff um, so that you could add some of that to your drawings. Uh, and then today we're going to talk about how to create new views, um, not just the views that I showed you how to create on Wednesday, but some other types of views, and then how to get some sheets going to print. So after today, um, we'll get back to geometry creation, essentially. So we'll talk about how to do floors and roofs and ceilings and all of that good stuff. All right, so let's talk about our views again. Um, we started off, or we ended our, our, uh, our lecture last time with talking about uh, how, to, how to copy some views, right? So I showed you over here in the project browser how to uh, duplicate views and how to use those views. Today we're going to talk about how to create completely brand new views, um, which is sort of an anomaly in Revit, right? Because there are very few times when you can hit a create new button and something brand new is created, but views are one of those things where you can actually sort of do that, okay? So I talked about uh, last week how you can take views over here and you can copy them um, slash duplicate them and use them for other things, right? And what I mean by that is, for example, this floor plan here, right? We will use this floor plan as a floor plan. We can also use this floor plan to uh, act as the architectural template for the ceiling plan or for the finished floor plan or for the furniture plan, right? But if we put all of that stuff on here, it's going to clutter it up. So we need to have the capability to take uh, a view of a floor plan here or anything else really in um, our project browser and to be able to duplicate it and visually change it uh, separate from other views, right? So uh, what I showed you last week was, for example, we have our main level, right? Here's our main level. If I want to make a copy of that main level, I can right click, I can choose duplicate, and I get a copy of that level, right? Uh, duplicate with detailing takes all of the annotation and duplicates it as well. Just duplicate takes just the architectural shell and duplicates it, okay? Now, this original view, the main level, and this copy of that view, they're independent now, which means that I can add things that are view specific to each one of these and it will not show up on the other. So for example, on main level here, right, I could come in here and I could delete all of these dimensions. I'll probably get some errors, right? But I could come in, delete all these dimensions, delete this text, delete all this junk over here, right, delete that and everything looks the way I want it to. That doesn't affect anything happening on this copy of that floor plan. So now I go to main level copy two and all of that junk remains, right? Well, not junk, but annotation <laughs> remains, right? Uh, so those, those uh, views, the thing that you're going to see in common, let me do a WT window tile so I can see them on the same screen, right? The thing that you're going to see in common is that the model elements, like the doors and the windows and the walls, right, those all remain the same. Um, but the annotation and the detail type items, those um, can be different from view to view. Okay, so that's, I won't hopefully say it too many more times, but I just want to make it very clear that you can duplicate the views and you can have different information on them after you've duplicated them. They don't remain connected, essentially. All right. Uh, I can rename these. So this one is called main level. This is main level copy one. I could right click and, re and choose rename and we could call it main level um, furniture plan, right? And then I can rename, right click, rename this to main level um, dimension plan. Okay, so you can make as many of these as you want. There's not really, um, you know, sort of a limit on those. All right, so now I'm going to close these out, and I just have my, this is what's called my main level dimension plan open. I think I'm going to open my main level. There we go. We've got that open. We're kind of looking at things. 
Um, let's talk about some visual things that are going on with this. Before I, I get into all the other types of views that we can create, I want to um, sort of prep you for putting this on a sheet and printing it. And uh, you really need to know some of the visual things that you can change to make this look better and to get it ready to print, okay? Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to explore kind of this visual style toolbar down here. And that's going to help us uh, get this view ready to print and looking the way we want it to. Does anybody have any questions for me before we kind of keep going? Anything? Okay. All right. All right. So let's explore our visual style toolbar here. And I also, I don't want to forget, so if I forget, somebody remind me, but I also want to remind you about visual um, graphics, VG. So we'll talk about that. In fact, maybe we'll talk about that first so I don't forget. <laughs> uh, I want to remind you that within every view in Revit, I can type VG or VV, right? VG and I get this visibility graphics override box pop up here. And this is, if you again, if you are using AutoCAD, this is very similar uh, to the layer dialog box, okay? And we have a filter list right here. And I'm gonna choose architecture, that looks good. Um, but this essentially shows all of the different items that are present in this view, okay? And, and really every other view in, in Revit. Uh, it's broken out into model categories, which are things like walls, doors, windows, and it's broken, um, second, here's a secondary tab here, into an annotation category, right? So things like dimensions and keynotes and text and detail lines, all of those things that are view-specific, annotation, right? We're not going to worry about these other three things right now. So we have model categories uh, and we have annotation categories, okay? So this functions again like a layer dialog box where I can come here and I can check and uncheck things and make them visible and not visible. Uh, and that is specific to the view I currently have on my screen, right? So um, under main level, I could turn off all the walls and doors. And again, that doesn't affect what is happening on these other two floor plans, okay? So I can come down here to walls, uncheck that, hit apply, and my walls turn off doesn't mean they're gone. They're still there. They're still in my model, right? But I visually can't see them, okay? So this is going to be your best friend. I'm going to turn those back on. This is going to be your best friend when you are trying to uh, decide what things you want to show on a plan or an elevation or section or whatever, right? And what things you don't, right? You can go in there and you can, with one fail swoop, turn things on and off and make it look the way you want it to. Um, and as I said, that uh, visual styles it translates to any view in Revit. So if I go to my north elevation here, here's my north elevation, right? I can type VG or VV, and my visibility graphics dialog box pops up. And I can, for example, turn off my walls again. Oh, there's Kevin. I can hit apply and my walls turn off. Oh, hold on, I need to go ask Kevin, talk to Kevin for one quick, let me pause our video.
I guess we didn't actually pause that, so that'll probably be on a recording. <laughs> um, but my point here is, you know, I'm in a an, an building elevation, and <clears throat> the building elevation, you know, these same visual things apply. So I can come into my visibility graphics, VG shortcut, or VV, and I can turn things on and off. Okay, so I'm just going to turn my walls back on. Uh, the hard, this is a really easy uh, dialog box to navigate. The tricky part most of the time, um, if you're trying to turn a specific thing on or off, is really sort of figuring out what that item is, is uh, technically called, right? And what I mean by that is um, some things you may think are uh, like a door, is a door obviously, but every now and again some tricky person um, creates a door and they create it as a generic object instead of a door. And it still functions like a door, but it's called or categorized a generic object, right? So you're in here trying to turn off doors and you're looking at this thinking, I know it's a door, I know it's a door, I don't understand why the door's not turning off, right? Well, sometimes things can be sort of miscategorized, I guess is maybe the best word. So um, just, just a warning, you won't run into it likely a lot, but just a warning, okay? I also want to show you that there are some subcategories under each of these objects, right? So uh, not only could I can kind of wholly turn off the door category, right? Doors turn off. But if I wanted to, uh, I could turn off kind of that indication of that door swing, right? So elevation swing. Oh, there it is. Apply. And that elevation swing turns off, right? So this will just visually allow you a high um, capacity to customize what you see on your, your drawings. All right, I'm going to turn that off there. Okay, here we go. So here we go. Now we have, we're back to our, our building shell here, and we know we can duplicate views, and we know that they remain independent of one another once they're duplicated, and we know that we can use our visual styles, or sorry, our um, visual graphics dialog box um, to visually manipulate these things, okay? Another way that we can visually manipulate things, and this is sort of a, a workaround, this is kind of a, I don't know what best to call it, but it's maybe a, a, an easy way to pick one object and to hide it, turn it on or off or whatever you want to do. Um, but we can do on-screen visual graphics, okay? And um, the nice thing about an on-screen visual graphics change is that I don't have to do things as a group, right? So I type um, VG, and if I, you know, click on doors, it turns off all the doors. Well, sometimes I don't want to turn every door off, Sometimes I just want to turn one door off, right? So I have the ability also to come in here and click on an object, right click, override graphics in view, or sorry, no, I lied, hide in view, <laughs> hide in view, okay, element. I could also choose category, which would turn every door off, but if I just want to turn one thing off, I can choose element and it turns that one object off. Okay, let's turn off this wall symbol here. Click, right click, hide in view, element, and it turns off. Okay, and so there is kind of a simple way to kind of pinpoint, you know, different things that, you know, you don't want to turn every instance of the window off, but you want to turn one specific instance off, right? I could also, if I wanted to hide part of the grid, click, right click, hide in view, element. Great. All right. So we can turn things on and off wholly as a category, or we can turn things off one by one, right? Um, using a, a pick and a right click. Okay. How do you get them back, right? That's the next question. They're gone forever. No, just kidding. <laughs> How do you get them back once we've turned them off, right? What's that? C Control Z. There's a good one, right? Although if they're very, if you've done that a long time ago, you're <laughs> doing things, right? Um, there is Control Z, so I could turn it off back on immediately if I've just turned it off. Uh, but there is another really easy way of going about turning things back on in Revit. Uh, I'm going to come down here. Okay, we're going to get into our visual graphics dial or uh, tool palette here. Uh, yeah, toolbar, I guess. And there is a little light bulb down here. I don't know why for the you know. For all the people who have glasses, you know, they just make a squint more. Um, but these tiny little icons, right? There's a little light bulb. Reveal hidden elements. So I, if I click on that, 
okay? I get this magenta view. And this, ma this magenta view, right, this outline around my screen, it shows me things that have been hidden, right? So um, this we're not going to worry about. But I can see that that door is magenta, which means it's not visible in the current view. So if I click on it, right, I can come up here and choose unhide element. I click on it, unhide element, and I choose uh, toggle to, um, the toggle is essentially to get out of this view. I toggle out of the view, and now they're back. You can do it that way, okay? So this little uh, reveal hidden elements light bulb will allow me to reveal hidden elements. All right, so we can turn things on and off, right? Um, adding kind of a nice level of customization to our drawings. Let's talk about some of the other visual things that we can do um, to sort of prep our drawings to get them on sheets uh, to print them, okay? So I'm just gonna start over here in the corner and remind you what all these things are, and then I'm gonna show you how to use them, okay? Um, and again, the idea behind what I'm doing right now is to get this, this view ready to put, be put on a sheet. And, and in fact, before I do that, let me just show you what that means, okay? We don't just, when we're printing drawings in Revit, we don't just hit Control-P, like right here. We don't just hit Control-P, and we preview this, and it looks like that. You don't print drawings out like that, right? You don't give it to a contractor to build like that because it doesn't make sense. Um, there's a lot of things wrong about printing a drawing like this, right? Number one, it's not to scale, so it's not measurable, it's not quantifiable. Um, it's in color, this one's in color, which is, you know, ridiculous, laughable if you gave everybody color um, construction drawings. Um, it's on the wrong size page, right? Uh, there's no information about this project. Who knows if this is level one, two, three, four, five, six of a building, right? Who knows where the, what the address is? Who knows, you know, anything about it? There's, there's no identifying information about this project on this piece of paper. And so in Revit, the workflow is we create our drawings, we draw them, we annotate them, we get them as accurate as possible, and then we put them on what's called a sheet. And a sheet, this is what a sheet looks like, okay? It has a title block on it. This is called a title block. And a title block contains identifying information about a project, right? And it's a specific size. So this title block, if I click on it and look here, this is an E1, it's a size E1, uh, which is an architectural size of paper. And an E1 is 30 inches by 42 inches, right? Nice big gigantic piece of paper. A pretty typical size, another pretty typical size of architectural drawings is 24 by 36, right? So we have a 30 by 42 inch piece of paper here. It has identifying information over here. And what our intent, our goal is, is we want to take that floor plan drawing, we want to place it on this sheet, and we want to print this sheet out, right? And that will give us all the information that we need to, you know, to give to a builder to then build this, this project, okay? Okay. Um, but before we do that, we need to make it look the way it needs to look, right? So if this is just a main level floor plan, we need to turn things on and off that are appropriate. Uh, we need to make sure that the scale of the drawing is correct. We need to make sure it's not in color, right? Um, we need to make sure that the boundary of the drawing is correct, right? If our project is just maybe this little corner of this cabin, we need to make sure to only show that little corner of this cabin, right? All right, so let's talk about all of these visual settings. And I, I go through, I run through these visual settings before I put a drawing on a sheet, okay, a view on a sheet. And I do that because it's easier to get them situated first than to go back and change them after the fact, in my, in my opinion. So the first thing I do is I make sure the scale is correct, right? This is at a quarter of an inch, and um, me just thinking about that giant size of paper that I created and this being a tiny cabin at a quarter inch, I think I might bump it to a half inch. So it fits a little nice, nicer on the page. Okay, so that's one thing that I, I like to check is scale. Is the scale correct? Okay, and if it's not, I'll show you how to adjust it later. Is the detail level of the drawing correct? 
okay? As I look at my uh, floor plan right now, I see the different striations of my wall assembly, right? If I click on this little detail level icon, you'll notice that if I change it to coarse, right, it looks like that. Medium, I get more detail. And if there's any more detail to be revealed, you would see it in fine. But in this case, there's not a whole lot more, okay? So make sure your detail level is appropriate. Um, change your visual style. Visual style is how you view this, meaning is it, uh, this is a shaded view, shaded is color. Uh, is it hidden line, which is more appropriate? You probably won't see a lot of difference between wireframe and hidden line at this point, but there is a big difference when you get into other different things. Realistic. Oh, now we're starting to actually get some patterns happening. We'll just change it to hidden line because that's appropriate for printing. Okay. So I check my scale. I check my, vision, my coarseness level. I check my uh, visual style. I'm going to skip over these two, the sun and the shadow. We're not really worried about those right now. Uh, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk about our crop region. Okay. So this right now, it's showing me that my view is not cropped. And if I click on it, my view is cropped. And, and you don't really see anything happen, right? Between me doing this and doing that. Not yet, at least. Okay. Uh, but you will, once you go next door here, to show crop region, because we can't see the crop region and what it's doing. So I'm going to click on show crop region. That little light bulb lights up like it's bright. And I get this kind of viewport looking thing around my drawing. So this viewport looking thing, this defines the extent of my drawing shown when I pull it onto a sheet. Okay, so right now, I can see everything within the scope of this box, right? And it goes to there, and it comes here. I can move it. You're, you see I'm moving it. I click, and I hold the grip, and I move it up and down. Okay. Now, if this little setting before it, where it says do not crop view, if I pull my crop region in and that is set to not crop, then nothing really happens, okay? The second I come down here and I click on crop my view, it cuts off anything beyond the scope of that crop region, okay? So essentially this will allow you to visually define what you see in your view, okay? And again, this is view specific. So whenever, um, whenever something that I know was on a drawing is not showing or you know, there's some mysterious disappearance of things out in nowhere land, uh, usually my first inclination is to check the how the crop boundary is working. So again, right, do not crop, click, crop, click. And I can grab this and I can just really kind of zoom in here and very selectively choose what I want to be shown in this drawing, right? If I only wanted to show the kitchen of this cabin, I would crop it so that I would only see the kitchen, okay? So I'm going to now take this crop region and make it larger, right, get it looking the way I want it to. One thing that is happening here that I don't really like is that my elevation markers are quite far away from my little house. See how much distance there is here? So I'm going to grab those and I'm just going to use my, my arrow keys on my keyboard and nudge those in so they're a little closer. I don't really like having my crop boundary out here and I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, the crop boundary really functions like a viewport. If you, again, AutoCAD speak, but it really functions like a viewport, okay? It defines your view. Every view in Revit has a crop region. There we go. So I'm just going to nudge those in. I could drag them, but I think nudging them is a lot better, right? Again, what I'm trying to do here is just prepare this view for printing. Okay, so that looks good. But my crop boundary, I still have a lot of space here. So I'm just going to snug this right up here. And you probably think, well, there's nothing out here. Why, why does it matter if it's you know, there or not? And you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to bring this in. There we go. Okay, so my crop boundary is, has a nice definition now. This crop boundary, um, when you drag it onto a sheet, which we're going to do in a minute, it's visible. And 
um, you can see it, right? Uh, which I don't like a whole lot. So a lot of times I'll come down here and I'll turn off the visibility, hide crop region. Once I get it where I want it, I turn it off, okay? That's just a visual thing because it won't print, right? Like in AutoCAD viewports, you can turn to print or not print. This object, let me just show you, inherently in my print dialog box, I've set it so that hide crop boundaries when you print, right? And that's a, that is an out of the box setting. So when you go to print, um, your crop boundaries will not print. Oops, hopefully I didn't print anything, okay. So we have crop region, not do not crop, but I do want it to crop. <laughs> we have show or hide crop region. I'm gonna click that and turn it off, okay. And then we have two other things we're gonna talk about today with regard to visual style. We have a temporary hide or isolate, and then we have the reveal hidden elements, which I've already showed you, okay? The reveal hidden elements, when I click on it, we get a magenta outline. Anything in magenta is not visible in the current view, right, like this grid. But I can click on it, unhide element, toggle out of it, and it turns it back on. So anything that is turned off is revealed with that little light bulb. Okay, uh, the other thing, these little sunglasses, temporary hide isolate, okay? There may be instances where you may want to visually turn something off on your screen, uh, but you don't want it to go away forever, okay? A really good example of that is um, an object that maybe obscures another object, like a floor, which we don't have floors in here yet, um, but sometimes floors obscure things below them, obviously, right? And sometimes you want to see those things below the floors. So this temporary hide isolate, the little sunglasses, will allow you to hide things just for a second and then turn them back on without having to use a visual graphic, okay? So for example, if I'm in a 3D view and I want to look in this room or I want to show a client, you know, what's going on inside of this room, I can say, oh, hold on, let me click on something, come down to my sunglasses, Hide, el hide element, you see we have hide category, or sorry, isolate category, which means if I click on that, just my walls are isolated. Do you see that? Everything else turned off. But I, and I have this cyan uh, boundary here. I can reset my temporary hide isolate, and it comes back. <clears throat> I can click on that wall again. Hide category. So if I choose category, it means everything that is defined similar to that. My walls and, you know, so your client can say, oh, you can count these up. Oh, we have 15 windows. Oh, okay, yeah, that looks good. All right, well, let's go back, reset that. Okay. If I want to hide or, or isolate um, or turn back on one object, instead of using category, I'm going to choose isolate or hide element. So we'll choose isolate element. Now I can really just kind of look at that one thing. Okay, or I can come in here and reset it. I can click on this object and choose hide element. And again, it's a temporary hide. So the, the client looks in there and like, oh yeah, that space looks really great, go for it. And then you can reset that. Now the nice thing about this is that you can turn things on and off and before you print, uh, Revit will say, hey, wait a minute, you have some things that are highlight or the hidden. Do you wanna turn them back on before you print? Um, so you can choose to say yes or no, okay? Um, but that is another kind of visual manipulation of your screen. Uh, and again, it's, it's specific to whatever view you're currently in. Okay. All right. So we have our scale we're going to adjust before we uh, start thinking about printing. We have the coarseness level of our drawing. We have the visual style, which in general, you don't ever want to print in color, right? Unless you're, there's a reason for it. Um, we have our crop boundary and do not crop, right? So we want to make sure to set those. Uh, we have our temporary hide isolate, and then we have our reveal hidden elements, okay? I'm not really going to worry about these other things here just yet, okay? Um, but in preparing a view for a sheet, I think a good kind of practice, a, would be to start over here before you go to print and just work through all of these different settings, okay? And then by the time you're at the end, you will know that you, you likely have most of the things caught that you want on or off or scaled or whatever. Okay, any questions about any of that? What terrible stuff.
All right. So we, we've, we've created the view that we want to put on a sheet, right? That a sheet is then printed. Um, we have visually manipulated it so that it looks the way we want it to, meaning the scale is correct, the detail level is correct, um, it's cropped you know, to whatever extent we need it. Um, we've used visual graphics if necessary to turn things on and off, right? Um, now it's time for us to take these views, put them on a sheet that has you know, a title block, and to print them out, distribute for this object being built, right? This project being built. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use sheets, all right? So, so far we've really just kind of manipulated Revit's views, right? These are all views, okay? We have some schedules and legends here. Um, but then we also have sheets down here, which is, again, different from AutoCAD, right? In AutoCAD, um, well, I guess you could have all of your sheets in one AutoCAD file, but it's not great practice. Um, but all of our sheets that we're going to print are in one file in Revit, which is wonderful, right? So all of the views we, we create and then use on sheets are all in the same file, which the system just works really well together. So to create a brand new sheet, let me talk about how to create a brand new sheet, and then I'm going to show you how to put a view on a sheet, okay? So to create a sheet is really easy. I click on Sheets, I right-click, and I choose New Sheet. And it says, hey, what title block would you like to put on that sheet? Well, we have the option right now of None or an, a big, gigantic size sheet. We also have the option to load different size sheets, which I'm going to show you how to do. So I can choose one of these, or I can decide, hey, I want to use a different size sheet. Click Load. And go all the way to the bottom. Title blocks have their own little folder. Click, click. And we have all these other sizes, Arch A through E1. So I'm going to click on the first one, hold Shift, click on the last one. Oh, we already have E1, so click on the second to last one. I'm going to hit Open. And by doing that, it will load all of those different sizes into my project, right? Revit kind of likes to run their template files kind of lean and clean, so they don't load every size of tile block in there, but um, you really will use most of those in your career, so might as well put them in there in the beginning, right? I choose the one I want. Let's do 22 by 34. Okay. There's my title block. So by doing what I just did, right-clicking over sheets, new sheet, picking my, my title block, click, okay. I just generated a new sheet, and that, that's all there is to it, essentially, okay? So now, whoops, I have this sheet. If I click on it, it's an object, it's a family, it's an annotation family. Um, its size is indicated here when you click on it and select it, okay? Um, it definitely has a boundary, which is wonderful. I'll show you how to manipulate the information in this information block over here. But I also want to show you how to place a view on this sheet so that you can then print it, okay? Uh, I'm going to go over here to main level, click, click. And we've made this look the way we want it to. Um, one thing I want to clarify, what I'm about to do is take this view, right, the main level view, and I'm going to place it on this sheet, all right? And what that does is it takes this object that is at real world scale, which means you drew this cabin the actual size it's supposed to be for people to live in it, right? So whatever that is now, I don't remember, right? How big is this thing? <laughs> 46 foot 4 inches by about 42 feet, right? So this project is actually a physical size in Revit. Uh, when I take this view and I put it on a sheet, it will um, be scaled. So Revit will scale it for me. There's no me thinking about, again, for those of you that have used AutoCAD, there's no scale factors, there's no zooming in or out, there's none of that thinking about that stuff. There's taking a view that is full size, placing it on a sheet, and Revit translates it to scale for you. Okay? So I'm going to come back over here to my drawing or my sheet. Click, click. And I'm going to click on my title block and just see what size it is. Well, I don't really think I want to use E1s. Those are really big sheets to print out. I'm going to change this to 22 by 34. So I select the title block. I change it to 22 by 34. There we go. Okay. 
the um, getting a view onto your sheet is the easiest thing in the world. I'm going to click on the view that I want to place on the sheet. I'm going to hold my mouse button. So click and hold, drag the view over, let go. Oh, what is happening? Click, and I placed it. Oh, okay, it's not really fitting very well, is it? <laughs> Maybe half inch scale was too large for that to fit. Okay, I'm going to, let me close out of a couple of things here. I'm in a window tile, WT. So I can see my view over here and my sheet over here. I have taken this view and I have placed it onto a sheet, but it's not really fitting very well, okay? So I'm gonna go back to my view over here, click, and instead of this being a half inch scale, I'm gonna change it to back to a quarter. I should have just left it. So this changes to a quarter, and look at that. Magically, this changes to a quarter. Click, click, and I'm gonna drag it over here, put it on my sheet, okay? Again, that parametric, those parametric relationships between objects are really working for us um, in our Revit setting. I change the scale in the view. It changes the scale of the drawing on the sheet, right? So magical. <laughs> All right, everything's working the way it should. Okay. If I want to remove this view from this sheet, I can click on it, and I can hit delete on my keyboard. Delete. It doesn't delete the view out of my drawing, it just removes it from that sheet, okay? I could then grab it again, drag it over, let go. That's much better, right? Click and place it. Okay, so any changes I make over here are expressed over here, okay? Let me close that out. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make changes to this view through our crop region, or what we can call now our viewport, okay? If I look at this and I think, oh, this is, you know, a half of an inch is equal to a foot, you know, I really want to kind of change that, um, I can engage my view while this view is on my sheet. So if I click, click, I just did a double click inside the crop region boundary. Let me do, undo that again. Okay, click, click. You notice that the title block grays out, and now I'm engaged in my view, so I can actually select things. I can change things, right? I could also come down here to my scale and change it from a quarter to an eighth. Too small. We don't want drawings this tiny on a piece of paper, right? So we're going to change that back to a quarter. A quarter is probably a pretty good scale for this one. Okay. To get out of that view, I can double click over here in space, click, click. Or, click, click, I can right click and choose deactivate view, right? So this is really just uh, choosing to engage the model from the sheet. Click, click, I'm out. Click, click, I'm in. Click, click, I'm out. Okay? And that's really a nice feature. So every time I need to make a change to the view, and I'm a lazy drafter, I don't like to move back and forth very much, but I come over here, I don't have to double click on main level, change it. Go back to my sheet, click, click, there I am. Or I could, it's not, I mean, it's not terrible, right? All right, so now we have a view on the, on the sheet and I can print this, control P, right? So let me just show you now what this would look like. Uh, let's see, this is a arch D, boom, there we go, there we go, okay. Preview that. And now we have a drawing. There's a little bit of weirdness happening, like this elevation symbol is hitting the title block, which we can fix. My view title that automatically generated when I place this on the sheet is not in the right place, so we'll fix that. Um, but in general, what's nice about this now is that I ha not only have my drawing, um, I, I have an area to have some identifying information, right? So the project name, who owns it, who are all the design consultants, um, the scale of the drawing is indicated here. And most importantly, this is gonna print to scale. So when it goes out on the job site, if something needs to be quantified, it can be measured, right? I'm gonna hit close here, I'm not gonna print. But that's how we're going to take a view. We're going to set it up visually to make it look the way we want to on a sheet, and then we're going to print it, okay? Uh, 
Now, the reason behind getting this set up before I put it on the view or on the actual sheet was um, I was trying to not have happen what actually did happen <laughs> um, by when this was a half inch scale, right? I didn't want this to happen. I didn't want it to be messy, right? I wanted to make sure that it looked the way it looked so that when it came onto the sheet, I didn't panic about it looking this way, right? Um, because I think especially when you're new at this, when if you saw this happen, you would say, I don't know what's happening. What do I do, right? Um, and so I, I like you to run through all the visual uh, settings so that this probably doesn't happen. Um, but just know, even if this does happen, you can always go back to the original view or you can double click and engage this viewport. Click, click. You can change the scale. You can do a lot of other things. Click, click to make this work, including I'm nudging this with my keyboard. Right, I'm just using my arrow keys to get this where it needs to be. Okay. Um, you notice I kind of moved it down a little bit so that that elevation marker is not touching the title block. Although this one is very close, um, but now my view title is kind of not where it needs to be. Maybe I need to change a couple other things in here to make it work, right? Click, click. Maybe I need to pull these grids down in my model, right? Not against the rules. Maybe I need to grab this and nudge it down with my arrow keys, right? The in intent here is just to get it so that, click, click, it fits on the page nicely, but it still remains readable, right? So I'm just grabbing those things and I'm moving them in, making them look wonderful. Click, click out. Okay, that looks a little better, right? Now I have a little bit more space kind of around my drawing. The scale looks really good. I still need to move my, my view title here, which I'm gonna show you how to do. This view title is automatically generated when you place a view on a sheet, which is wonderful too. Um, I can click on it. I can nudge it with my arrow keys. So I can move it into place, right? I can also click on it and drag it with my key, with my mouse. Okay, oh, it's touching that, I don't like that. Click, Let's nudge that down, move it over. Looks good, okay. So if I wanna move it only, I click on the object and I nudge it with my arrows or move it with my mouse. If I want to resize it, that's a different task. I have to actually click on my viewport here, click, and do you notice when I click on my viewport, I get these grips at the end and at the beginning? Escape, escape. They weren't there before. They weren't there when I click on it to move it with my arrow keys, right? Click. But with those engaged, I can then drag those in and make it the size I want it to be. Zoom extents. There we go. Okay. So I placed a view, I made sure it was the right scale, that it visually looked the way it should, that the crop boundary was appropriate. The crop boundary being appropriate is pretty important because you see how my crop boundary sort of defines where it's placed on the sheet, right? It won't print, um, but if I have a crop boundary that's kind of way out here, it makes it difficult to double click in and out of the view, okay? So that's why I, you know, I just kind of like to keep things nice and tidy. I like to keep the view, the crop region very close to where it needs to be, right? Double click out, double click in, turn my crop region on or off, hide crop region, click, click out, click, click in, right? Click, click out. Um, but those are going to be things you'll be doing to place objects on sheets, okay? Now, once we have objects on a sheet, we're going to print. We're going to print these, right? Um, you'll also want to change the information that is is occurring in the in the title block here, right? And without really knowing a whole lot about how it's working, um, I want to show you how easy it is to change this information, right? Click on it. Click owner. Shelly Bodily. Enter. Project. SLCC admin building, enter, 
Oop, that's too long. We'll just do SLCC admin, enter. What is this sheet? Floor plan, enter. Okay. Now, what's nice about this is some of this information is kind of project based, meaning the, you know, from sheet to sheet, um, this project is always going to be called SLCC admin. And what's nice about this is that when I fill in the information in here, if I go to another sheet that I've created over here, click, click. Oh, look at that. The information that's project base uh, fills itself out. Now, you know, A101 might be called floor plan, but A102 could be called ceiling plan. So Revit is um, smart enough to know, and what these things are called, they're called labels, okay? We're not going to talk about those today, but there are labels that are buried into this title block that know if it's a project specific input or something that is specific to this sheet, right? Like this sheet contains a ceiling plan. This sheet contains a floor plan, right? But they're all part of the SLCC admin project. Um, the project number, I can change that, you know, 2019-02, there we go. Issue date, when did you issue it? Who drew this? Who checked it? Um, what sheet is this? If I want to rename the sheet, I can call this AE101. Enter instead of A101, whatever, right? Um, this is something I always take off all my projects. I don't feel like the client needs to know when I print my drawings. <laughs> I like them to think it was at 5 p.m. the day before they were due, right? Not 2 in the morning on the <laughs> day we're meeting. Um, but we're not going to really worry about customizing all that right now, right? Um, the point is I want you to know that we have a title block here. You know how to load them into your project. Uh, if I click on it, I can see what size it is. I can drop down and I can change the size of it, okay? So let me show you the difference between a 22 by 34 and a 30 by 42. It's a lot larger sheet, right? So if you, um, you know... I guess my point with this is you need to think about what size of page you're going to be printing on because the scale of your drawing will really kind of depend on, you know, how much paper you have to print it on. You know, I had it at a half inch because I originally thought, oh, we'll do it on the larger size. It probably would have fit here, but going to a smaller size page, you know, that didn't work. Okay. There's just a lot of variables when you're first starting this that um, can throw things off. Okay, so we have our sheet. Um, one thing I want to point out here, they're going to uh, schedule likely uh, alphabetically here, unless you know how to sort them. So you see A101 is at the top, AE101 is at the bottom. There's a little plus sign next to AE101 because it has a drawing on it. Floor plan main level, all right. If I go to the ceiling plan, AE102, Main level is sort of locked out because it is on a sheet already. If I try and drag it onto another sheet, it'll say, hey, you can't do that. You know, that's already on a sheet, okay? I can grab other plans. Those are at a quarter inch. And I can drag those over, right? But I can't do that same one. How easy is that, right, to pull all these drawings over? Simplest task. It scales it for you, it names it for you, it puts a view title, everything is wonderful. We have some visual settings, of course, this one needs to be, you know, manipulated a little bit, but in general, it's super easy, right, to, to create all these different um, sheets, essentially. All right, any questions so far? Okay, I think we have, let me just make sure I didn't forget anything. We have one more thing I want to go through today. It's not in my booklet here, but I think we should go through it today. Let's see. Okay. I do have one more thing I want to, I want to talk about today before we move on. 
Uh, and that's how to create other types of views, okay? And uh, what I mean by that is, you know, we see we have floor plans, ceiling plans, uh, 3D views, elevation views, but you know, there really aren't a lot of detail views, right? Or interior elevations, um, or other types of views in here, sections yet, right? And so I wanna show you how to just to quickly create a few of those. I don't think you won't be doing any of those in your assignment. Um, but let's, let's just go over that. So, um, if we go to the view tab here, okay, we have a create, uh, tool palette. So create views, obviously, uh, you have sections that you can create using the section tool. You have details and enlarged plans, um, that you can create using the callout tool. This plan view, this will allow you to create floor plans, reflected ceiling plans. We're not gonna really worry too much about these. We don't create structural plans, right, in design drawings. Um, plan regions are a separate topic, and then area plans will allow you to take off areas in Revit. You also have an elevation creation tool here, so I can create an elevation. Uh, I can also create a drafting view, and a drafting view is really just kind of a dumb view that you can draw lines in. So. Um, it's kind of like AutoCAD drafting. It's 2D drafting that doesn't tie back to the model, okay? So if you want to create a new view and you don't want to use the project browser, this is where you're going to do it, essentially, okay? So a section, click. I click. I drag the section through the objects I want to create. Click again. My section is generated. You're going to notice over here I now have a section area, okay? So this section has, it has a, a little head here, it has a tail here. Um, I can drag this in and out. And I can change the extent, the field of view. So if I only want to view this much of a section, I can. If I want to view a section all the way through the building, I can. Click, click. There's my building section, okay? Again, you'll go through all the different visual things to make it look the way you want it. But how easy is that, right? Any of you who have um, drawn AutoCAD sections, that's, this is amazing, right? <laughs> All right. So that's how we're going to generate a section. Uh, we have callouts. If I click on the down arrow for callout, we have, we're just going to work with rectangle right now. But essentially, a rectangle will, will allow us to create detail views of items we want to view um, larger and add more detail to or enlarge plans. So I click on rectangle, I click, I move my mouse over the area that I want to enlarge, click, and I have a detail. Again, those of you that have used AutoCAD, magical, very magical. <laughs> um, this call out is called Main level call out one. See, if, if, I've, if I have it selected, I can see that here. And it, because I'm creating this in floor plan view, it creates a call out underneath floor plan. So double click on that, and I get a very nice little view of that detail. Okay. We'll go over these a little bit further, like later on in the semester, but I just want to make you aware of them for right now. Okay. So call out. You'll notice that's a floor plan detail. I can use it as a drop down and I can define it as something else. So the, the floor plan, which would be like an enlarged floor plan, which you would use for restrooms, stairways, um, areas that need more definition. Um, you can also choose a detail view. Click. It's gonna look exactly the same. Click, click, and it's gonna function exactly the same. But instead of uh, sorting up here with the floor plans, it sorts down here with the details. Okay, so click, click on that, oop, click, click on that detail, and there's my little detail view. I still can apply all the same visual graphics and different things. I still have a crop region. I can extend it, right, if I need to make it look the way I want it to, but there's my little detail view. Okay, all of these can be pulled onto sheets. So if I have this little detail and I go to my floor plan sheet, I could grab my detail and drag it over. Uh, click, and I can place it. Look how cute that is, right? <laughs> Got a cute little detail on my sheet there. And it all functions really well, right? I also have, so I'm going to 
go back to my main level here. So we have a detail view, we have a floor plan call out, we have a section that we can generate, right? All very wonderful. Um, we have an elevation view we can generate. So if I click on that and click on elevation, I have the option to create a building elevation or an interior elevation, okay? So a building elevation would be from the outside of a building, right? You see the tags are the same. And as I hover toward the building, it turns its little head towards whatever we want to elevate. Click. Okay. So that elevation just generated right there. There it is. If I want to create an interior elevation, elevation, I'm going to change this from building elevation to interior elevation. And the marker is a little bit different. You see that? And this will go on the inside of a building to show, you know, different portions inside we want to um, elevate. So click. If I click on this elevation marker, I just clicked on it, these little check marks pop up around the edge of it. And if I check mark those, oh my gosh, little interior elevations are being generated everywhere. There's one. I'm going to click on the head of that, two, the arrow, three, four. Okay, so. Now you'll notice over here my interior elevations A, B, C, D have been generated. A little bit of work needs to happen to make these look exactly the way that they need to. But again, for those of you that have sat and drawn 8,000 sheets of interior elevations, right, as a new intern, um, this is really magical. <laughs> Uh, so if you click, if you if we go back to our main level here, and I click on that, this one is going very far, right? It's kind of defining th this whole wall right here, but you can click on this little um, grip at the end, and you can just kind of pick where you want that elevation to start and stop. Does that answer your question? Yeah. The building section is generally going to go through the entire structure. Yep. All right. So we have interior elevations. Uh, and then we have drafting views. If I click on drafting view, I can give it a name, you know, if I want to. I'm not going to right now, but give it a scale, hit OK, and a blank piece of paper pops up, okay? So um, this is a really, so uh, in architecture, these will be used for probably kind of boilerplate details, seismic details, signage details, um, things that maybe don't need to be tied to the model, right? And what that means is I can come in here and I can use, um, which again, I'm just showing you these, don't worry about knowing specifically everything about them yet. But I can come in here and use detail lines, which we don't know about yet, um, and text, annotation, leaders, dimensions, and I can draw whatever I need in here, right? So again, signage details, um, threshold details, um, ADA type details, boilerplate type of things that go in every set of drawings, right, that don't change from one to the next. Um, and they're not tied to the model, right? Um, interior designers, I think, use these to uh, really to a, sometimes a high level, I think, um, because these are really great places also to import CAD files, right? Like if you have, um, you're working for a specific company, right, that has things that they do a specific way, which is very vague sounding. Um, but they have CAD files from 30 years of worth of work that you don't want to regenerate, right? Um, you can bring those CAD files into these drafting views and they don't tie to the model and not waste all of that work, okay? Again, it doesn't probably make a whole lot of sense now, but these are just places to put 2D drafting type things that aren't tied to the model, okay? And those um, drafting views, again, they schedule over here in our project browser. Okay. They can be scaled, they can be dragged onto sheets, um, and used. Um, all of these can, essentially, right? Oop, let's go to our main level here. Okay. All right. So we want to create new views, right? Not knowing a whole lot about them um, at this point, but I just want you to know that we do have the ability to create a lot of different types of views in our project browser using the View tab, and the Create Tool Palette here, right? Um, and when we get a little bit further in the semester, um, and for your midterm project, your late term project, um, you'll be creating some views, right? And we'll go back over this again as well. Any questions on any of these so far? 
All right, let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, okay. Um, all right, I think I'm gonna alter your assignment just a little bit. So I will post your assignment by tonight. Um, one fine, sorry, one final thing, we'll call it quits, I promise. <laughs> now that we have all these views created, right, um, I wanna show you how to print, and printing is just so easy in Revit. When you're printing, if you wanna print something to scale with the title block, you're gonna print from your sheet, okay? Um, and really, the way to print is to go to the sheet you wanna print, Control P, you're gonna choose the printer that you wanna to print to, okay? Um, and I'm creating a PDF, which is a digital file. Uh, you're gonna choose, hey, do I wanna create multiple views, like multiple sheets singly, like have 50 different PDFs, or do I wanna combine them into one? So I always usually com choose combine multiple views into one. Um, down here, you can choose only to print the current view, or you can click on select views, which will allow you to select multiple sheets at a time. Select. I'm gonna uncheck views. I don't wanna check every, I don't wanna print every view. I want the sheets, right? So I'm gonna choose sheets here. Click, click, click. Okay. I'm gonna choose no there. So I've just chose to print all three of these sheets. I'm gonna choose setup. We'll go over this again, don't worry. And it's on the video but I'm gonna choose my page size, arch D. So an arch size D is a 24 by 36. Um, this size right here is sort of driven by the printer that you choose. If I choose my little home printer that only prints eight and a half by 11, um, it will only show me letter size in here, right? So this is really driven by um, what printer you choose. So I chose an Adobe PDF and that has a really, a lot of page sizes we can choose from. I want to center my page for my print. I want this to be zoomed to 100% of the size, which this term sounds really kind of strange. Um, but if I choose fit to page, uh, this won't be to scale. It'll slightly be smaller or larger than what it needs to be to fit on the piece of paper and it will be out of scale. So we're going to choose zoom 100% of size. Landscape or portrait, you choose. We're doing landscape right now. I'm going to hit OK. Okay, I'm gonna choose, I want this to be in one PDF and I'm gonna hit okay. So now when I go to print, when it prints, it's thinking. I'm gonna save this wherever I want it to be saved. Save, Revit thinks about it for a second. Didn't I, I hit save, right? <laughs> Maybe it just did it that quick. Let's go and look. Uh, did I hit cancel on accident? Let's see. Okay. Huh. Is it? Hold on. Let me look around. Well, that looks good. Our print dialog box. Well, something, anyway, ideally, <laughs> uh, that PDF should be saved in that location, so you'd have a digital file. If I wanted to physically print it, right, you could send it to the printer, and then you would have a physical print when you're done, right? Um, but really, that's how you're going to print. So we're just going to Control-P, set up our print dialog box, um, and away we go with our prints, right? It's really odd. I'm thinking that maybe I've got something hidden in a window that is not allowing that to be seen, but it's weird. Or I just have two PDF prints out there hanging about somewhere. But that's how we're going to go about printing. So, um, all right. Any questions on printing, creating views? Not yet, right? I'll post an assignment tonight, uh, and then when we meet next time, again, I kind of like to breeze over the topic 
pretty quickly. So we'll breeze over the topic of placing views on sheets and printing, and then um, we're going to get into geometry again. So likely floors and ceilings, and just kind of move forward uh, with with all of that good stuff. So.